Can you guys believe Jada still has not replaced her SUV yet? Hey guys, my hair finally feels good. Oh my goodness, when you go to a country that has humidity like Belize does, your hair gets so flat and so sticky and I don't like that because my hair is thin and so when it gets that way you can see straight through my scalp. So I'm glad to be back, washed all that gunk out and I'm back to normal again. It's Tuesday, March the 8th. I just got through uh, editing and uploading, well one's uploading right now, the second vlog. I wanted them to go back to back on the same day because I wanted you guys to see the trip and the funeral and I wanted to have this conversation at the end of one of the vlogs and then I realized that I wanted to keep the vlogs just intact like that because I can share it around so my mom's friends can see what happened at the funeral especially the second one that has the funeral thank you guys so much for um, watching the videos okay because I did put a lot of effort into recording as much as I could when I was there so um, yeah so let me get into what I wanted to talk with you guys about first of all I wanted to let you guys know how I was able to go to Belize because you guys know I was flat broke my sister was able to use a hundred and 10, I think it's 110, not 120, 110,000 points off of her credit card mileage thingy. Normally she would use those points at Christmas time to take her family to Belize first class, but she used them, used the points this time to buy two tickets for us to be able to go and they were economy, but we were lucky enough that we got bumped up to economy plus a couple of times. And um, I w I'm so grateful that she did that because it was quite a sacrifice for her. You could see it when she walked on the plane and she wasn't just like sitting down at first class. She was like, oh, there was my first class seats. I'm like, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I'm always really grateful though, so I'm, I, I know that she was happy to do it. Um, my Aunt Jenny and Christina bought their own tickets, and then Joe paid for half of his ticket because my cousin Susie, the daughter to the uncle that passed away, she paid for half of Joe's ticket. So with all that in place, we could not say no. We had to go, and we borrowed money from the kids for spending money, and then our check came on Saturday for the big order we did, and I had Jada forge my signature. Oh my God, she did such a good job. It looked like I signed it. So she signed it and put it in, and voila, we have money today, so we paid everybody back today. So anyways, did I say that it's Tuesday already? It's Tuesday, March the 8th. Joe's making some boil up out there because I need the carbs right now. I need the good healthy carbs, the right plantain and the sweet potato and so on and so on. And I'm going to eat it with some salmon and just have a wonderful meal later on today. What's up, babe? No, I'm just seeing what you're doing. Who are you talking to? They want to see who I'm talking to. Like my um, Susie's mom, Emilia, thought I was talking to myself. She goes, who are you talking to? The camera. I'm talking to you guys. You know I see your faces when I talk to you, right? Especially if you have a thumbnail picture up, I see your faces. So, um, Sugar212, talking to you again, girl. You had me cracking up when you said, I almost needed translation on this one. I purposely left it that way because the Creole is so similar to English that I knew that you guys would catch it. You guys are open-minded and you're also very brilliant. So I knew you'd catch it and I was given one last kind of <clears throat> you to the people who keep starting this rumor that I'm not a true Belizean, that I wasn't born there, I uh, have birther issues like our president and one of these days I'm going to show my birth certificate so you guys can see that I'm born here. <laughs> I'm born in Belize and I'm naturalized in America and I'm grateful to belong to both countries because we have dual citizen dual citizenship you know in Belize my kids have dual citizenship even though they were born here anyways um I already told you how I got to go I really wanted to go because I wanted to be a support to my cousin and I wanted to be a support and protection for my mom my mom's the matriarch of the family now because she's the first daughter she's the third child and the first daughter and um, her parents are gone, so she's taken over as the elder. And unfortunately, there are a lot of her siblings because of their spouses that have rifts going on with my mom. And nobody was gonna put her, you know, tell her anything out of the way because I was gonna fix that and so was my sister. She was gonna fix it too. So before I get into that, let me get into the eulogy. My cousin, the daughter of the one that died, the one that lives here in New York, she called and she asked me, I think I saw like a little gnat or something. She asked me to write the eulogy. I said flat out no. And let me tell you why I said no. I've done this before to where people just take what I've done and use it as a um, outline. Yeah, there is a gnat in here. Go away. Outline or, you know, template for what they want to write. And then they throw out everything that I put my hard-earned um, mindset into, my hard-earned work into. And then they come back and they write and go, look at me, voila, I wrote the, the, the eulogy. 
And so I'm like, no, I don't want to do it. You know, I'd rather they write it and whatever. Because when she got to Belize and her father died, my eldest uncle, the one that looked like Kenny Rogers in the other video, his kids took over the planning of my uncle's funeral. And I don't know why, because when they were first born, they went to go live in another district in Belize and they were never really close with my mom or any of the other siblings behind. So I don't really know why they took over. My cousin was in a weakened state because her father had just died and she didn't want to fight and I don't blame her. So they took over the planning. And so that's why I told her I didn't want to do the eulogy because if they mess with my eulogy, it's about to pop off. And so um, my mom convinced me to write it. I wrote it, it, took me five hours. I did an excellent job at it. There's just certain gifts that I know that I have and certain gifts that I'm still insecure about, but I know this. I have the gift of writing. And so when she got it, I heard a rumor that was going around saying that they didn't have anybody to read it because everybody would break down and cry. Well, even though I was distraught, if I'm called upon to do a job, I'm very professional. If I'm if I'm supposed to read scripture or the eulogy at a funeral, I hold it together till I'm done, then I cry. If I have to sing a song, I hold it together, and then when I'm done, I cry. So I called my cousin, and I'm like, that's before I went. The Thursday, and I said, you know, if you're having issues with somebody reading the eulogy, I don't mind doing it. Maybe you don't want to ask me because you think I'm not going to be able to hold up. And she goes, no, I'm not asking you because, unfortunately, when I copied it off and gave it to them, they tore it apart and pretty much decimated whatever you had there and I feel like I can't get that control over it. And so I'm like, okay, then don't put my name on it and I'm not reading and I'm done. And so then my mom, of course, is upset. And so um, we get there and at the wake, they still don't have the books ready for us to take a look firsthand at the books and the funerals the next day. And so finally, um, when we went to the services, they had the eulogy kind of inserted into the book and pretty much what they did was just systematically removed any memory of my mom off of my uncle's life because my older uncle David and the younger uncle Michael, their spouses are pretty much scumbags and they just didn't want anything to do with my mom because of some infighting that's going on. And I don't want to get into the intricacies of it, but my uncle Michael, one of his kids, had really wronged my mom with some money issues. Since then, they haven't spoken over this whole ordeal. You know, my uncle didn't speak to my mom for it. My uncle started coming around lately, like in 08 when we went to Belize. But the daughter did the right thing. She came back and she talked to my mom and she made amends. And my mom has forgiven her and at least one good thing came out of this trip, right? The, um, the daughters, um, my uncle's other daughter and his son, they were awful to us at the wake. They wouldn't allow us, they wouldn't serve us the drinks. They would pull the food away when we went for the food. And pretty much they were classless and they can go burn somewhere. I really want nothing to do with those cousins. And um, my um, older uncle, um, his kids didn't really have any contact with us. They just kind of did the glaring thing, glare and glare and glare, whatever. You know, your looks can't hurt me. Um, one of his sons was the one that read the eulogy and he did the best with what he had to work with. And later he was telling me, I, I think he heard that I was kind of pissed about the eulogy. I think my uncle Roger told him and I don't care that he told him because it wasn't a secret. And he came and he was talking about the fact that whoever was rewriting it was doing a bad job, which is his sister. And that he had to take over and try to rewrite it. And he was at a loss because he did not know the stories. They don't know my uncle. My uncle that died is the second born son. Uncle David is the first. My mom's the first born daughter and she was third. And um, she's the third child, I mean. And my uncle, that uncle was my mom's right hand. And my mom was his right hand. Anything that he wanted to hide from his wife, he would give it to my mom to hide at her house. No, don't bring it here. Keep it at your house. Keep it at your house. Don't bring it here. You know, because I don't want her to know I have that. So my mom is the one that actually knows where the will is. She has a copy of the will. And of course, it's at the lawyers and she knows who's getting what, who's not getting anything. And so she's like kind of like chuckling a little bit. So that was the only bad part of the funeral where those two uncles, the, the few kids that I told you, the one uncle was a son and a daughter and the other uncle was two daughters that were just being scumbags and the wives were scumbags. Pretty much, you know, I want nothing to do with them and just leave my mom's name out of their mouths. That's pretty much how I feel about them. And so I was able to be of a protection to my mom, a cover for her. My sister was too, my aunt Jenny. We all surrounded my mom and lifted her up because my mom took it really, really hard. When she got to see the body, I didn't show you guys the body. We took pictures of it and he looked really, really good in his casket. Uh, he People always say that and then the person looked jacked up, right? No, he looked like he was asleep. When me and my sister touched him, and this is the first dead body we've touched, and we've had a lot of dead loved ones. And we're like, we almost expect for him to sit up and go, what are you guys doing here? You know, I'm not gone. And my, my that made us just weep because we, he didn't do it. We wanted him to do that, you know. 
<laughs> is that silly? The thing that got to me the worst was the church bells. Even now when I edited the videos and the church bell rang, tears just spurted from my eyes. And my daughter's like, the bells are ominous and eerie, but why do you cry like that over the bells, mom? And I said, because when I was 12, my mom left Belize and she was supposed to come back like within three months and she didn't end, she didn't end up coming back till a year later. My dad had left too. Uh, he left shortly after her though. And every Sunday at the start or the end, however you call it, of the week, I knew that they weren't coming home that week again. Here, So here's another week that's starting. You know, tomorrow I have to go to school on Monday. And my mom and dad never came back. And I just thought they would never come back. And my grandmother loved us and treated us well. Okay, so we weren't being treated poorly. But you know, as kids, you want your mom and dad. And so for a year, that's what I went through every Sunday when St. Ignatius Church Bell would ring because that's the Catholic church near my grandmother's house. And it would ring for church or for funeral or for wedding or whatever the case it was ringing for. And it brought me a sadness. The bells always brought me a sadness because my mom never came back. And then she did come back, you know, at the end of that year or whatever. And um, our family was together again. But I didn't realize that it had such an effect on me because I haven't been to the Anglican church in such a long time. And when the bells rang, I just, whoo, I lost it at the funeral and I lost it here when I was editing. But I'm better now. Yeah, it was a very exhausting trip and an exhausting experience because we went in with smiles at the wake and for them to not want to serve us the food or the drinks because they have some beef with us they looked really really petty matter of fact the way i got to eat i sent joe to get my food and my drink because he was switzerland and all this everybody wanted to get to know him well who's he oh that's barbara's husband blah 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 and you know what a sweet little story at the end there was a guy that's my cousin susie's new husband's nephew because my cousin Susie just got married a year ago um or got remarried actually and um when I walked upstairs I thought he was saying a friendly hello to me because the whole family was being friendly towards us as we went upstairs right because we we're just meeting her in-laws for the first time and he was exceptionally nice and I said do I know you you know because maybe I knew him from somewhere and she goes he goes I watch your show I think you're doing an awesome job at YouTube with this and that just kind of blessed my heart I'm like I come all the way to Belize and I find the one fan in Belize City that watches my show. I don't think a lot of Belizeans watch my show. I could be wrong, but I don't think a lot of Belizeans in Belize watch my show because the internet is really slow. So I, I can't be mad at them if they can't watch. But I know that one person talked at the vlog, I forget the name, and you said you're on San Pedro and you watch. So I'm like, you're that one, that one person that watches. So that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. I wish that I could have stayed longer to where I could set up meet and greets there, but it just was not in the cards. And I'm just really grateful that I got to go. I'm going to go eat some oatmeal right now for breakfast. We got a bail because it's 7.22 right now and the phone company is coming out to fix the U-verse and the phone. They said for the U-verse, it's between 8 and 12 is the window. And then for the uh, phone, it's between 8 and whatever. I'm like, what the hell? Mom's getting chemo today. This is the first of three that she's going to get. They're going to be spaced three weeks apart. She feels very optimistic because it's only one bag of drugs instead of two bags. And um, she brought some herbs from Belize. It's the leaf of the soursop tree. And um, I'll try to look it up and show you on the computer what the soursop looks like. But we heard that that's what my Aunt Grace went home and drank after she was diagnosed with stage 4 ovarian cancer back in the 80s. She only got three rungs out of the six rungs of chemo that they wanted to give her. And she went home to die, essentially. And then somebody told her about soaking that leaf and drinking the water like a tea. And she lived 18 more years, uh, sickness free. So my mom is not playing this time. After going to Belize and seeing how poorly some of her family members treated her, she's like, you know, you're right. I think they wish that I would die and I'm gonna live and not die. I'm gonna beat this. So the technicians are here. One for the phone line and one for the Ubers. So the Ubers guy came first. And I think he was trying to shake us down for some money. Because he's saying that something's wrong inside. And it's gonna be 99 bucks. I'm not paying that. So I'm recording on the slide to show this to their boss. Because I'll go to the office of the president of AT&T. I've been there before. They're not gonna shake me down. I pay for inside wire jack plan and pretty much 
That means when they come fix anything, it's supposed to be free to me. And they're like, no, $99. I'm like, no, this is a shakedown. Come here. Come here. Oh, you see? Bend your head. Bend your head. <laughs> he bent his whole knees. Wrap it. I'm telling you, this is a shakedown. Mm -hmm. I told you, what would you have done if I wasn't here? Because I opened my mouth. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Yeah, so what I was saying in there is that the technician for Uverse came first. And he was like, it's not here, it's inside your building. Of course he's going to say that because it's $100 for them to go fix whatever is inside the building that's wrong. It was working fine yesterday and then it just stopped abruptly. So uh, I told him I'm going to wait for the phone guy to come because he has uh, better knowledge of the system anyways than a U-verse technician. And they're all from the same company. So he's like, we're from the same company. I said, yeah, but some of you have more training. It might be bright and I might be washed out. But I told him that LTE for 4G LTE stands for less technicians employed. Cause they all crap. So the phone guy calls up and he goes, Hey, you have something wrong with your phone? I'm like, Yeah, the Uverse guy is here right now trying to shake me down for $99, so you better get over here. And I've already told him that if I have to pay $99 to fix it, I won't pay. I'll shut off the whole phone and the whole internet and just do my business from home. And I'll still be on a contract with them till August, but that's only till August. It has been sick since uh, March the 2nd, since the day after my uncle died. I took her to the doctor the Wednesday before I left, and they said upper respiratory infection. And then they gave her some, I think they gave her stupid meds. And then um, Jory had to rush her into urgent care on Sunday morning before I came back. And they said inner ear infection, and then they gave her some type of stupid antibiotic that's not working. So I took her back again today, Wednesday, and they said it's bronchitis and the inner ear infection. So they gave her amoxicillin and some other decongestions and stuff that I think might do the trick this time. I'm going in to get seen because ever since I got off the plane on Sunday, I've had this like shortness of breath and a fluttering in my chest. I do have PVCs that I suffer from from time to time and it could be those, but I'm not a doctor. Hey guys, so I'm at the shop alone. It's Thursday. I think it's the 10th of March. Um, Joe went to the auction with Jada. Can you guys believe Jada still has not replaced her SUV yet? I mean, she's looking at stuff at the auction, but if there's nothing available that she likes, I told her not to get something, you know? So she had her eye on this Acura for a while. It was an SUV. It was 2001. It had 165,000 miles. And can you believe those people drove the bid up so high that the first week the car was sold for 3,500 and then it appeared back at the site this week where it went for 2,650. I mean, I don't know what's going on if the auction site is manipulating the prices or what. Or if people are just bidding on it and realizing they don't want it for that price. It's not worth that kind of price. That's the kind of price you would pay to buy it from somebody off of the street, not from the auction. Because figure if you get it for $26.50, you still have to pay the auction a site three to $400 for all the fees. Then you still have to go to DMV to license the darn thing and pay your taxes, right? So I think that was ridiculously overpriced. And we have to be very wise about what we pick for Jada. But this time they saw a Chrysler Pacific SUV and she called me just now to tell me she is in love with it. So the auction for that won't be till Tuesday. And I really hope she can win the bid on that and win it for a very low price so she can still have a little bit of change left over in her hand when everything is said and done. So that's where Joe and Jada is. Josh was at home and Jory is getting ready to go to work. And I'm at the shop by myself because I had to come do the property taxes for this business, for the bottle printing business. Um, it's due um, once a year. You have to have it filed by April 1st and then you pay the, um, the fees by August, which sucks for me because it's always at the time of my birthday. Um, I lucked out when I did the taxes just now because it had a box that said Sally S L. S-A-L-Y and it means same as last year and because I clicked that little box I didn't have to fill out nothing I just clicked submit and it was done I was like thank you god it's over it's over you love her okay so that's the sign that's the sign I couldn't I couldn't be a millionaire in a week or two okay. just the way that I wait this is a real song that someone wrote or yeah, is this yeah, yours yeah, yeah, no, okay but I can't, I can't remember the words but I think I could be a millionaire in a week or two. Uh-huh. It could be a millionaire in a week or two because we how she love her. Yeah. It could be a millionaire in a week or two back. I don't remember how the song rhymes, something like that. Okay. 
I forgot about it. So wait, like, is their love so strong? Yeah. Like, so their love is so strong, it's like million dollar strong? Right, right, okay, right. okay. That's it, that's it. <laughs> million dollar strong. That's it. <laughs> He's gone, but that old possum still around. <laughs> I said, Oh, George is gone, but that old possum still around. He's driving down the highway and a Lamboa and call it a Cadillac. A Cadillac? Yeah. Cadillac. That's what I mean to say, but <laughs> I'm just trying to get it together. <laughs> all right, all right. When the police pull him over, he said, George, we're going to haul you off the jail. He said, oh, officer, before you haul me <laughs> off the jail. That's the truth. There you go. Do that? That's alright. Huh? Don't hurt yourself now, we get it. <laughs> Start it? Okay. Oh. The light? Oh. Kind of feels like my car. See the air works. Rear. Air works. I love this car <laughs> and I really hope I get it because it's so cool and it's really new in the sense. Like it has gadgets and stuff and I can control the radio on the side. It's just really cool. And it's spacious and it has a TV, so I don't know who's gonna watch that. But <laughs> I'm just vlogging, <laughs> and it has a, a roof, uh, a moon roof, and a sunroof that I love because I love that crap. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm getting ready to go to the gym with Joe. It's Thursday evening, it's around three o'clock. I'm just gonna do like five minutes cardio and just some light weight lifting just to get back into the groove of things. The doctor said I could. I have an appointment to see my primary care physician on April 4th <clears throat> and then she can order any other tests that she might uh, deem necessary. I think I'll be better in the next few days though because I think it's just the flying so quickly and the, the change from the uh, climate and all that stuff. In fact, that I got super duper wet and exposed, you know, at that funeral, but anyways. Um, Joe um, is going to go see the doctor on that same day because I spoke to one of my friends through Periscope. I was private scoping with her and she's in the medical field and I told her that I wanted to do a fundraiser to um, raise money to buy hearing aids for Joe because I noticed on this trip home he really, really wasn't hearing, I think because of the plane rides up and down. But my sister was like, oh my God, he's getting worse. And so he is one of the people that are blessed enough to hear well when he has hearing aids. And so... Um, I wanted to get him some hearing aids. He hasn't had any in about six years. And so this friend told me that if I have medical, you know, coverage through Medi-Cal or Medicare or Medicaid or whatever, through the Affordable Health Care Act, then Joe could get hearing aids. And I was like, what? He was never able to get before. It was for people over 65 and people under 18. She goes, no, I'm telling you, he can get it. So I called Kaiser and I found out that yes, he can get one device for each ear. And for zero copay. 
So he has to see his primary care physician first. And I thank God. I thank God for the Affordable Health Care Act. So I'm so excited for my husband to be able to hear again because you guys don't even understand how hard it is on a marriage when someone is hearing impaired. I'm not talking about deaf because with deaf you can just use sign language, right? Hearing impairment. It's like he hears some of it, but he doesn't hear a lot of it. And then people will tease and go, oh, he has selective hearing. Well, all men have selective hearing. So he has that, plus he has deafness. You know, so I'm gonna be so happy when he gets fitted for hearing aids. And of course, I'm gonna take you guys down this journey with me. Thank you so much for watching, liking, and subscribing. Please check out my other channels right here to the right of your screen, the cooking channel, the product review channel, and Joe's channel. The links are in the description box.